Hello and welcome to Need Center's tutorial on Zoom etiquette for clients. My name is Brooke and I'll be your host today as we walk through some of the do's and don'ts of Zoom etiquette. So what is Zoom etiquette? Etiquette simply means rules for good manners and good behavior. Zoom etiquette means what we should do and what we should not do when we are in a Zoom call in order to have good manners and good behavior. Here at Needs Center, we have something called our five needs expectations. These are rules that all participants as well as staff must follow at all times when they are in Needs Center programming. They are as follows. Be safe to keep yourself and others safe. Be a team working together to solve problems and get stuff done. Be respectful to yourself, to the teachers and other students. Be accountable, owning up to your mistakes and taking responsibility. And be fun, make friends and have fun when you're in program at Need Center. These five expectations will help us learn more about Zoom etiquette. We will be showing you some examples of Zoom etiquette using these five expectations to guide us through this tutorial. The first expectation that we need to follow in order to have good Zoom etiquette is be safe. Examples of being safe when on Zoom include no running around, no climbing on your chair or desk, and if a sibling is with you, keep your hands to yourself. Another way we can be safe is to let the teacher know if you have to leave and why you are leaving. This is part of keeping you safe because the teacher cannot know that you are safe if you just disappear and they don't know where you have gone or why you have left. They won't know if you are upset, mad, frustrated, sad, or if you've left for another reason. So leaving when you're on Zoom is okay as long as you let the teacher know where you're going and why you're leaving. We will now show you an example of what this might look like in a Zoom meeting. So everybody make sure that your cameras are on and, oh, Nora, where are you going? Hmm, I wonder where Nora went. Yes, Eric. Hi, Brooke. Yeah, I'm not sure where Nora went either, but do you think I could just get a glass of water really quick? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for letting me know before you leave. The second expectation that we have to follow in order to have good Zoom etiquette is be a team. Examples of being a team when on Zoom include being kind, helpful, and supportive to the other students in program helping one another when problem solving or answering questions, as well as not interrupting the other students when they are answering a question or talking. Another way we can be a team is to make sure that we have our video turned on so that everyone in program can see you. Program can be very boring for everyone, including the other students, if no one has their cameras on. We will now show you an example of what this might look like in a Zoom meeting. Okay, everyone, um, welcome to program. Uh, can you guys please turn your cameras on? It's hard for me to know if you guys are here, if your cameras are off. The third expectation that we should follow if we want to have good Zoom etiquette is be respectful. Examples of being respectful when on Zoom include not interrupting the speaker, whether it's a teacher or another student, keeping yourself on mute unless you are talking in order to cut down on background noise, and trying your best not to be distracting to the other students or to the teacher while in program. So this can mean finding a comfortable spot where you can stay for the whole program, avoid walking around or doing other things while in program, and not talking to other friends or family members while you're participating in program. Additionally, not sending any messages to the other students in the chat that are not related to program are ways that we can be respectful in program. Another way we can be respectful is to raise our hands before answering a question and speaking. It is not respectful to interrupt the person who is talking. We will now show you an example of what this might look like on a Zoom call. Okay, hello, Eric and Nora. Thank you guys so much for joining program on time and coming um, to program today. I'm so excited to see you guys here. So today we're gonna talk a little, oh yes, Nora, you have a question? And here's an example of what it might look like when we don't raise our hand before speaking. So this is what it looks like when we have bad Zoom etiquette and we just start talking and we interrupt the teacher. Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for joining me in program today. We're gonna to be talking about chemistry. So I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit about chemistry. Awesome. Chemistry is my favorite subject. Oh, wow. I'm gonna nail this. This is gonna be great. Yeah, that is awesome, Eric. Thank you so much for sharing. But next time, can you please raise your hand and I'll call on your name if you want to say something? Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Eric. 
The fourth expectation that we should follow if we want to have good Zoom etiquette is be accountable. Examples of being accountable when on Zoom include joining program on time and if you're able to, staying until the end of program. If you do have to leave early, just let the teacher know. Another way that we can be accountable is to use your real name when you join a Zoom call so that all the other staff and students in program know who you are. We're gonna show you an example of what this might look like in a Zoom meeting. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to program. Thank you for joining me. Um, before we start, I see that Eric has joined us. Hello, Eric, it's so nice to see you, but I'm not sure who has joined as iPhone one. Would you mind turning on your camera so that I can um, make sure that I know who's joined our program today? Oh, Nora, it's you. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, would you mind changing your name to show up as Nora just so that I know who's joining us next time? Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Nora. Okay, now that I know exactly who's in program today, we can get started. And last but not least, the fifth expectation that we should follow if we want to have good Zoom etiquette is be fun. So this is one of the easiest expectations that we can follow. And all that it means is that we should try our best to be kind to the other participants in program and make friends, as well as get to know one another and ask kind questions. As well, we should try our best to participate fully in the activities and games that are going on in program. Here's some really cool pictures of our Need Center participants having lots and lots of fun while participating in program on Zoom. All right, so now that you know all about good Zoom etiquette and bad Zoom etiquette, we are going to play a little bit of a game to test what you have learned. So we will show you a video showing either an example of good Zoom etiquette or bad Zoom etiquette. After the video plays, you'll have five seconds to guess whether it was an example of good Zoom etiquette or bad Zoom etiquette. Ready? Let's go. Eric, I'm wondering if you can answer this question. What is two plus two? Two plus two? Yeah. Um, yeah. I know the answer. I know the answer. It's four. Oh, okay, great. Nora, so yeah, it sounds like you knew the answer right away, but next time in order to be a team, we're going to give Eric just a little bit more time to answer, okay? And if you have an answer next time, just raise your hand and I'll call on you, okay? Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Nora. Can you guess if it's an example of good Zoom etiquette or bad Zoom etiquette? You're right if you guessed bad Zoom etiquette. So in this video, Nora did not give Eric enough time to answer the question that the teacher had asked him, which is not a very good example of how you can be a team. So next time, if Nora just let Eric answer the question for himself and gave him a little bit more time, that would be a better way to have good Zoom etiquette. Okay, everyone, so we're gonna be talking a little bit more about science today and a little bit more about chemistry. So, oh, I see that we have a question in the chat from Eric. Okay, so Eric, thank you so much for checking in with Nora and being such a kind and supportive friend. But when we're in program, we really need to make sure that we're only talking about what we're learning about in program, okay? <music> Okay, time is up. Can you guess if this was an example of good or bad Zoom etiquette? Well, it was kind of a trick question because it's an example of good Zoom etiquette, but also of bad Zoom etiquette. So firstly, an example of good Zoom etiquette is that Eric was trying his best to have fun and make friends in program by asking Nora a very kind question about what she did on the weekend. But bad Zoom etiquette is putting things in the chat, talking to other students in program about things that are not related to program. So next time, in order to have good Zoom etiquette all around, Eric should just wait until there's a free time in order to start asking questions of other participants while he's in program in the chat. 
Okay, great. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining on time. We're still waiting for Nora to join us. Um, I wonder when she'll be here. She hasn't let me know that she'll be late and she's about 15 minutes late. Can you guess if this was an example of good or bad Zoom etiquette? You're right if you said bad Zoom etiquette. So in this scenario, Nora did not join program on time. She was 15 minutes late, which is okay if you have to be late to program, but Nora also didn't tell the teacher that she would be running late. So next time, in order to have good Zoom etiquette, Nora should just tell the teacher ahead of time that she's going to be late to program. Okay, so now I have a quick question for you guys. Um, Nora, I'm wondering if you could tell me what color is the sky? Blue. Blue, yeah, awesome job. You got it exactly right. And I see that Eric is clapping for you. He's so proud that you got that question exactly right. Great job, Nora. And thank you, Eric, for being such a kind and supportive friend to Nora in program. Thank you guys. <music> Can you guess if this was a good or a bad Zoom etiquette example? So you were right if you guessed that it was a good Zoom etiquette example. In this video, Eric showed Nora that he was going to be a kind and supportive friend to her in program by using the nonverbal reactions to clap and to celebrate when Nora got the question right. He was being a good team and a good friend. Good job, Eric. Okay, everyone, so thank you again for joining me in program today. We have lots of super fun stuff to be talking about, and we're going, we're going to be um, talking about many different things today, and we're going to be playing a few different games. I can't pick um, my clothes up right now. Oh, I'm, in a, I'm in a call. Eric, sorry, do you mind um, just finding a really comfy spot for you to stay seated throughout program and making sure that your microphone is off when you're not answering a question? Can you guess if this is an example of good or bad Zoom etiquette? You are right if you guessed bad Zoom etiquette. So in this video, Eric did two things wrong. Number one, he didn't keep himself on mute and he was talking to his family members in the background, which caused a lot of noise. And number two, he stood up and started walking around with his camera on while he was in program, which is very distracting to the other students as well as the teacher. So next time, in order to have good Zoom etiquette, Eric should find a comfortable spot where he can sit for the whole entire program without having to move around too much. He should keep his video on mute when he's not talking or answering a question. and. He should avoid talking to his other friends and family while he's participating in program. Okay, hello Eric and Nora. Thank you guys so much for joining program on time and coming um, to program today. I'm so excited to see you guys here. So today we're going to talk a little... Oh yes, Nora, you have a question? Yes, I'm wondering if I can leave early today because I have soccer practice. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for letting me know. Definitely, I'll keep that in mind, and then near the end of program, when you leave, I'll know exactly why you're leaving. So thank you so much for letting me know. Can you guess if this was a good or a bad Zoom etiquette example? So you were right if you guessed that it was a good Zoom etiquette example. In this video, Nora did two things right. Number one, she raised her hand before talking so she didn't interrupt the teacher. And number two, she knew that she had to leave early at the end of program and she let the teacher know ahead of time. Great job, Nora. Well, that brings us to the end of our client Zoom etiquette tutorial brought to you by Need Center. My name is Brooke. It was a pleasure being your host today, and I hope that you learned something new about how to have good Zoom etiquette. If you want to contact us at Need Center for any reason, please check out our website, which will be linked in the description below. There you can find our contact information information about our different programs, and a lot more really interesting stuff. So check it out. 
All right. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.